Good evening, Facebook family, friends, and my faithful, loyal YouTube subscribers. Today, uh, today is July 4th, 2016. So, uh, I just got back from the grocery store. You can see my little groceries on the counter. I picked up some tunes and stuff. I sat here all day waiting for my mother. We were supposed to go to Fat Matt's Rib Shack, like we normally do on the 4th of July, and get some ribs. At the last minute, my mother canceled on me. So I ended up I was going to get takeout, and this is what I had. The remnants of this is a whole fried fish snapper I get from the restaurant up the street. This, this is my 4th of July dinner. I supposed to have some ribs, but instead I had some a whole fried snapper and fried rice. It was really, really good. It was delicious, actually. So while I was waiting for my food to get my whole five. I went to a place called Chin Chin Restaurant up here on Howell Mill Road right next to Kroger. So I went to Kroger to do a little grocery shopping while I was waiting for my fish to get cooked, fried. And lo and behold, I bumped into an ex. An ex I used to date years ago. A guy I used to date back in 1994. Yep, 1994 I dated this guy. I just bumped into him. I hadn't seen him in years. I saw him at Kroger's. I didn't even recognize him at first. He recognized me. And I looked at him. I said, oh, him. So we started talking. I hadn't seen him in years. This, man, this was a man I was deeply, deeply, deeply in love with at that time, back in 1994. I don't know why, but I was. So anyway, here he was in the grocery store shopping. Um, he said he was here for the weekend, staying in a hotel around. We go to Agony around the corner in some long, some cheap ass hotel. I mean, what hotel around here, but I don't know. I didn't ask where he was staying at. So he said he was staying at some hotel around the corner and he was there picking up a few stuff um, for before he went someplace. I don't know. So anyway, we're sitting there in the store talking. And he says, You know, the gay lifestyle is nothing but a dead end lifestyle. You know, he won't get you no place. You have nothing. He's just dead. So I'm, I'm sitting there listening to him complain about how dead in, dead in the lifestyle is. How he won't get you no place and you won't have nothing. It's dead in. It's just a waste of your life. I mean, this man, if I'm 46, he's got to be 50 something years of age. So I'm standing there looking at him. I'm listening to this man. And this is a guy I dated back in 1994 who was college educated. Oh. Has a well, a nice degree. He a well, an educated man. He has a physics. He was a physics major. Uh, he taught college at a school here. He was a professor, I guess, is what you call. It. I don't know. But when we were dating, I was trying. If y'all hear this dog when I hear whining, she's trying to get these fish bones over here. When I was dating this man. This man was the biggest whore on planet Earth. While dating me, he would park his car at my apartment. At that time, was in my apartment off Ashford Dunby near Perimeter Mall. He worked near Perimeter Mall um, during the, during the, the when he worked his full time job. Anyway, he worked at Perimeter Mall and his. It wasn't too far from where I lived. So he would leave his car parked at my house and I would drop him off at work. Now, of course, I'm thinking the man is at work. It was going on for a long time. I would take him up to work. He said he worked from 11 to 11, like a 12 hour shift or something like that. So 10 to 11 or something. Something weird. It was in a typical 9 to 5. So I would drop him off at work and I would go back and pick him up. Now, I knew he was working out at the gym at the time. That he would go work out with somebody at the gym and go back to work and I'd pick him up from work. So this was going on and every night we'd be together. We'd go get some dinner, hang out. It was, in my mind, the perfect relationship because he was there every night. I never worried, 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 worried wondered where he was because his park was, car was parked outside my house for days. And he worked up the street, and I was taking him to work, so I didn't think anything about what, what he could be and what he could be doing. I was young, too. Uh, he knew this. He was, he was in a fraternity. And sometimes if he wasn't um, 
on some nights that he where he might want to rip the streets, but he's always he tell me he was with his frat brothers. <laughs> now, I didn't think nothing about it either because you were with your fraternity brothers. I'm thinking these are straight guys you're hanging out with. You know, I don't know. At that time, I was young and stupid. I know a whole hell of a lot better now. Anyway, this nigga was the biggest hole on planet Earth. He was ripping and running the streets. Me thinking he was at work. He wasn't at work. He was actually going to sex parties, um, bookstores, um, meeting guys in places like they had these X-rated film places that he would go to. He was at in a place called Insurrections, a bookstore. He was going to these various places with some friend of his that would pick him up and he'd run around and do all this horror shit, shit going to be my for all kinds of stuff. And I never knew all this was going on. I had no clue. This went on for a very, almost a year that me and this guy was together. And before I began to get the signs that something wasn't right. Now he is, let's go back to today, he's in the store complaining about the gay lifestyle being a dead end lifestyle. But look what you chose to do. You chose to be a hoe. You chose to rip and run these streets of Atlanta and chase behind every nigga that you can get your damn hands on in some very unscrupulous places. The Insurrection, Bathhouse, Bookstore, Piedmont Park, Little Night. You run around here, mess around with these guys, contracted HIV, years there after we had broke up. But now, and then you run, and there was another, you know, he used to be a very attractive guy, nice body built, now his body is a mess, he's overweight, his teeth were rotten. And I'm sitting there looking at this man thinking, what did you think was going to come out of all this horse ass shit you were running around Atlanta doing here? And what did you think was going to come out of this? So I listened to him bitch and complain about the like, gay lifestyle being a dead end lifestyle. And he, he wished it never, he, you know, it was the worst thing that could have happened to him. And I told him, you know, I've been with the same man now going on 20 years. We've had our ups and downs. Everything hasn't been perfect. We had homes together, cars together. We still working on some stuff together. We're still battling out. But one thing we do have is love for one another. You know, we went ripping and running the streets. We went running around to no bathhouses and bookstores and insurrections and all this other crazy mess that, that you were doing. Um, you set yourself up for failure by running around and participating in stuff. That's the choice that you made. You need to start making better choices with your life. Something's not right. If you feel that your life is a dead end, then you need to make some changes. I'm a black gay man, and I would never say that I think the life gay style is a dead end lifestyle because it is to not to me because I'm not living my life where it's going to end up a dead end lifestyle. I'm not saying my life is perfect, but I'm definitely not running around and putting my life at risk. I'm not running around with no sex parties. I ain't running around with no bathhouse, no bookstores, no. I'm not on the internet. You know, all this crazy shit that this man has been doing over all these years. But I've heard many guys complain about the gay lifestyle being a dead end lifestyle. But I only hear from people who live reckless, dangerous, stupid lives. If you're doing something fulfilling with a partner, and you're building something, you have something worth having. If you're living a productive life, and you don't. I don't care, gay or straight. If you're living a productive life, you don't view life as being a dead end lifestyle. I don't care, gay, straight, whatever race you are, background. If you're doing something positive with your life, something that you could get up every day and you're excited about getting up out of bed to, 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 do, to, to, to do, then you would not view life in such a dead end way. So, no, the gay lifestyle, and I hate to use the term lifestyle, being gay is not a dead end lifestyle. There are many gays living positive lives, doing positive great things in their lives, I and mean, they're not allowed living some reckless life, like my ex was doing, who's now miserable. I still ask, I look at that man, I said, I have to finish grocery shopping. So grateful I made the decision years ago to distance myself from him and put that hoe out of my life. After he and I broke up, I ended up going to see a psychiatrist, the situation was so bad, he had got to my mind so messed up that I literally had to go seek help so I could get through that crisis. I'm glad I did seek that help because he needed the help back then and himself, but he never saw any help for his sexual addiction and all, all these other issues and problems that was happening. That man was probably one of the most handsome men I ever dated, but you see guys, but I, I wanted to snap a picture of him, you wouldn't believe what he looked like. And I just sat there and looked at him. 
It's a shell of what it used to be. All the attractiveness is gone, gone, poof, poof. I don't think anybody, when he was running around being a whole, everybody was pursuing and chasing after him. Now I don't think nobody would touch what I saw standing in front of me in that story there. That was sad. Anyway, I'm just, I just wanted to, uh, to discuss what just happened at the Kroger up the street. I felt sad for him when I walked out of that store. So I saw him walk across the park a lot. He had like a little limp, so something, I don't know, he just kind of limped across the park. I was like, I'm wrong with his leg or something. I saw him get into a raggedy car. I thought to myself, you didn't drove to town with that. What have you done with your life? One of the most smartest, handsome, most attractive men I ever dated. Anyway, like my videos, please click like, share them with family members and friends. I do these videos to help educate folks about choices we make in life. It was discouraging and disheartening to see what I saw this evening. It was because of the choices he made. He made those choices that made his life a dead end. He went down a dead end street. So that he has to deal with the consequences of his of his own actions and the things that he did to make his life such a dead end lifestyle. That's the only thing I can suggest. You now, being gay is not a dead end lifestyle. Whatever you do in life is your choice and your decisions. It's up to you. Nobody can control your life but you. The decisions you make decide whether your life will end with a positive. Wow. Whether your life will be positive or you'll be going down some dead end street. Anyway, I'm out of here. Enjoy your fourth of July.